Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a special guest today. We have Scott Friedman, and he is a fitness coach, and he has some amazing information he'd like to share with us today. We're going to talk about mindset and fitness and how you could change your overall health and appearance just by changing your mindset and changing simple things in your life that could have a very big impact on your health and fitness. So Scott, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Well, first and foremost, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. This is glad to be here. Uh, very excited. And a little bit about me. Yeah, so I'm a fitness coach. I've been training for basically a decade at this point. I'm also a nutrition coach, a behavior change uh, specialist. And you know, my my journey is very similar to a lot of other personal trainers and coaches. So I'm, but I, I like to think of myself as a little bit different, and you'll mm -hmm. see why kind of as we go through it. Uh, you know, I started off as just kind of this kid who didn't know anything, um, and I got into fitness, and that's a whole other story. But I got into fitness in college, and I'm like, okay, I am this hustle and grind. Like, you know, you learn, just work out, you know, get in shape. What's so hard? Why is this so hard for you? And I had that mentality. I'm like, this isn't this is easy for me. Why is it so hard for everyone else? Like, let's just do just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And I found fairly quickly uh, in my, you know, my my experience, my journey towards and I've worked in all different types of fitness, commercial, corporate, private, warehouse, you know, studio, all those different things. Yeah. I found very quickly that you could give someone the best program. Here it is. I could give it to you on a silver platter. And whether it's weight loss, muscle building, whatever, the best right. diet ever. Here's the, here's the diet. Here's what you need, right? Here's the best situation you can do for you, for what you need and give it to someone. And 50% of people would take it and they would run with it and they'd be great. And they would be forever. They'd be awesome. Right. But then the other 50% wouldn't do anything. And yeah. it shocked me. I'm like, I'm giving you the keys to the house. I just gave you a $200,000 Ferrari and you're not going to drive the car. <laughs> like what's going on. Yeah. And I realized that it's not actually just about grind it out, willpower, be tough. Why can't you do this mentality? And I'm coming from a, a very gym bro. I was the president of my fraternity, like very gym bro vibe. Like I have every stereotype. Yeah, probably had it. And I, and I hated <laughs> yoga. I hated meditation. Like this stuff's stupid. It's woo. It's, it's, it's magic, whatever. No one cares. All oh, breath work. That's so important. Yeah. And I realized I'm like, you know, there might be something to this because it, I, I realized that there, there is clearly a, a, a piece that's missing in the fitness industry yeah. and it's the mindset aspect. Why would someone who's given all of the possible advantages in, you know, with a perfect program, not take that up? Well, yeah. clearly the answer is something else. And it's usually from my experience, something that has to do with perceived obstacles in their way, which is a mindset issue. They don't believe they can do it. They don't want to do it. And there's something that's stopping them. And they might not even know what it is right away because we don't actually say to ourselves, you know, uh, the real reasons we give ourselves excuses. And those excuses yeah. usually come in the form of I'm too busy. I don't right. have money. Uh, you know, uh, I don't have time for this. I'm stressed out. I don't have energy and whatever. The, and again, sometimes they're valid. Most of the time they're not. Right. And it's so I decided to deviate or I guess pivot away from just personal training to more of a fitness coach so I can or a fitness mindset coach if you were yeah so that I can really dive into what is stopping you from getting started what's stopping you from seeing the results I de help people identify that and then build an action plan around overcoming it so that when I give you the car, you can drive it. Or when I give you the program, you can take it and move it because I've seen it so many times. And it's shocking that the fitness industry hasn't caught up to this yet. And it's, and I'm not sure if they ever will, because and I have my whole, I have a whole issue with the fitness industry who is, I, and also I'm still in it. I'm still trained. I still do all the other stuff. Yeah. So I'm talking as someone who's in it still. Um, it, It's, it's one of those things where we're missing out on a mindset component because a lot of people don't realize that what's holding them back is literally themselves and nothing else. Yes, that is so true. You know, I think when, you know, going to the fitness area, you know, everyone's, you know, all pumped up. They got people around them. They're all exercising. And we all want to look good, but you really have to change your mindset. Cause like, as we were talking about earlier, so many people go in there with a positive mentality, but then they go back to their unhealthy behaviors after they lost the weight, after they did so well, because you could, if you don't, if you don't learn how to change your mindset and change your, your way of thinking and doing things on a consistent basis, you are probably going to go back to the way you were. So it's so important. Mindset is such an important tool that they really should acknowledge in the health fitness 
you know, area, because it, it plays a big role. If we don't have a positive mindset, if we don't have a certain way of doing things that are going to benefit us to give us the mental strength to actually keep good fitness, we're not going to succeed. Now, in your experience, what are some of the things someone can do to actually change their mindset and keep them really going on the right track? Yeah. And that's the key, right? Everyone talks about mindset. Oh, change your mindset. I'm like, well, how yeah. do I change my mindset? You know, it's like saying invest. Okay. In what? How? What do I have to do? Exactly. What, what do I look for? Like no one ever, everyone says the word invest as it's like this magic word. It's like the same thing. Investing is literally saying the same thing as mindset. It's like inherently like such an umbrella term that yeah. I hate using. So yeah. I, and I hate using the word mindset because it's so umbrella, but you're right. So how do you change it? So everything I talk about today are ways that I would go about changing it or ways that you could at least look at because it, it does differ for everyone. Everyone has their own experiences, right. their own thought process, their own paradigms, which is basically yes. how you believe things should be and how you change that is going to change on an individual level. So there's no like do this and you're going to succeed. It's not how it works. Like everyone kind of has their own story. Yeah. Uh, a couple. So the first thing I would do, and I, I have a three-step process. Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's a, there's a concurrent process. Mm -hmm. So first things first is there's usually something holding them back right. and I need to identify what that is. So I try to get as not the best term to use, but as reductive as I possibly can. Like right. I, I'm going to break you down and in, in a nice way uh, to figure out what's going on. When you say you don't have time, what are you actually saying? When you say you don't have money, what are you actually saying? And it's like that annoying kid on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who's a a always asking why, why, why? Why? Yeah. So ask yourself why, like you, so part, so number one, right? So part of this self-reflection, right? When you are feeling a certain way, being able to, you know, take a step back, count to three, one, two, hold on, three, two, one, right? And right. say, why am I feeling this way? What's going on here? And ask yourself these questions is a step you can take in order to start identifying why you're thinking what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. For example, I am notorious for having a monologue in my head, which might be weird. I'm not sure. I'm always talking to myself and I will find myself having fake arguments that have never happened, probably will never happen. Mm -hmm. And I get, but you, I wear an aura ring. And so my heart rate, it tracks my heart rate. It will literally go up yes. like, as I'm having this conversation. Right. And I, and I, and at first I was just like, and then I go out throughout the day, I ignore it, whatever. And I'm like, man, why am I so mad? Why am I so tense today? And I started to realize, I go, okay, wait a minute. Maybe this conversation I had earlier is something that's not good. So now I've started, again, it takes time. It's not overnight, but I started to identify a, hold on, I'm having this conversation. I'm getting worked up. Why am I getting worked up? And then right. I'm able to bring myself back to center. So self-reflection and how you're feeling is one step that you can take in terms of, and, and literally like five, four, three, two, one. So Mel Robbins. Um, right. Uh, Mel Robbins quote there. She has the five, three, five, four, three, two, one method. Yeah. And then you say what you're going to do. So like five, four, three, two, one, stop. And right. then you stop and you think through, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why did I do that? Like, for example, if you're going to eat late night, and you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to eat, like, I want to eat so bad. Five, four, three, two, one. It's like, wait a second. Why do I want to eat right now? And then identify. So it's taking that moment to self-reflect on why you're doing or how you feel. Yeah. So I use that as if, if you're on your own or if you're getting a coach, whatever it might be, I use that as one of the methods of self-reflection. I think number two, I think journaling is a very powerful thing that I have not yes. mastered. So I'll be the first one to say it's very difficult for me, but it is very powerful and I've seen the results. Yeah. Um, and I try my best to do it and we're all growing every day, but journaling is great because you're getting your thoughts out and just ask yourself two questions. How did I do today when it came to hitting my goal? Right. Right. And then just write down your thoughts. What made me mad today? What made me happy? And then what can I do tomorrow to do better? Just ask those four questions every day, write down a list and you'll start eventually start to maybe feel better or start to analyze, start to see, huh, there's this reoccurrence of me doing X and me feeling like crap. Maybe I should change this thing in X. Yeah. So whether it's self-reflection, whether it's journaling, you can also meditate, uh, whether it's two minutes or 20 minutes, meditating right. in silence or with a YouTube video, things like that. That's another thing you can do to yeah. start um, identifying. Cause when you're in alone in a room, you will tend to start talking to yourself like in your yeah. head and you'll start kind of being, what's this? So your mind will wander. Oh, the sky's blue today. And this is weird. Oh, that person was so annoying. And then you start to kind of get through it. Yeah. Uh, rarely are you like, people think when you're meditating, like you need to be like your, your head has to be silent. And I'm like, I rarely ever find that to be the case. I use it as a tool to help reflect on how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling and what I can do to get better. Cause I find it as like, I'm talking to myself and myself has all the answers. Right. So those are three things someone can do to help 
start shifting their mindset just from a right now today, you could start doing those three things. Uh, if you hated all those three things, here is a tactile approach or a pra like a, more of an actionable approach you can take. Right. And this is what I do with all my coaching clients as well. I go through this exact process. Number one, it's a three-step process. Number one is goal set. Mm -hmm. I want a goal set. And I'm not talking about New Year's resolutioners who, depending on when this gets released, uh, you know, who I think the numbers are, according to uh, data is out there. I think Forbes, it's like 75 to 80% of people uh, who have a health related New Year's goal give up after two weeks, 90 to 95% give up after one month, and only 5% are going after six months. Okay. Terrible right. numbers, right? Just horrible. Yeah. And from there, the number one reason that people fail at their health goals, uh, according to specifically Forbes, is they're not specific enough in their goal, which I think is accurate. I think that's a very good reason yes. that people aren't good. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means you need to develop a SMART goal. So what's a SMART goal? Specific, measurable, uh, aligned or attainable, uh, relevant slash realistic, and timely. Yeah. And you got to fill out all those categories as we were taught a million different times in the workforce. And right. so a SMART goal, identify everything that you need in order to achieve your goal. If you're going to lose 20 pounds, how, when, is it possible? Can we do this? Is what you're asking for reasonable? Things like that. That's yeah. step number one. Really break down what you want to achieve. Because if you're just going to say, I want to lose weight, that's very vague. And then I don't really know what we're going to do with that. Because that's, you know, is that actually the goal? Or are you just saying that? What do you want? I, I, I don't know. But if you break down, I want to lose 20 pounds in four months by doing X, Y, and Z. And here's what I'll do with X, Y, and Z. It becomes a very specific and you know exactly what you're supposed to do. Don't leave anything to don't leave it anything ambiguous. You should know exactly what you want to do and how you're gonna do it with yeah. your goal. And if you don't know how to do it, that's when you get help, right? Um right. number two, and this I think is like the bread and butter here. This is where people like this is where it clicks for them, I think, is yeah. what's your reason why? Why do you want it? No, seriously, like why? Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? And this is a good thing because then you're able to identify, number one, is that actually the goal they want or yeah. actually the goal you want. And what I recommend people do is take out a sheet of paper, you know, like just yay big, right? Fill out 15, 20 lines of reasons why. If you want to lose 40 pounds, write down why you want to lose 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. Family health. Uncle died at this age. Mom had this. Dad had this. I want to be able to play with my grandkids. I want to have less knee pain. I want you know, whatever it is, right? I want to look good in a bikini. I don't care. Great. Look good. That's awesome. You want to have six pack abs? Awesome. Write it down. As long as it's important to you and you can create an emotional attachment to your reason why, yeah. that's the important part. Um, I think that's step number two in the process is because it creates a re it, it creates an emotional relationship with your goal versus it's just something I want to do. You right. got to you got and I, I can explain later why it's important to create that relationship. But then step three is um, what are the next smallest action items that we can take in order to achieve the goal? So, for example, if you don't have a gym membership, the first thing would be go online and look up all the gyms in your area. Then look up the prices. Then look up which one you actually go to. Yeah. I, I literally, I, I just, I moved a couple of years ago. And I did this exact process because I'm like, well, I'm not going to pay this much, but I'm also not going to get to my car and drive this far. It's so like, yeah. what's the most, like, what's the, uh, what, what's what's the best compromised option I can get to? Yeah. Um. You know, that's the, and then it's call it by a membership or go online and purchase a membership. Then it's plan out how many days a week can you go? How long can you go for? Is that reasonable? Do we have to ramp up all those little things? What's the next step? If, if you bought the gym membership and you're still not going, okay, maybe set out your clothes the night before. That's right. another step, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's little things that we have to change in the process all of these things, the goals, the why, and the, and the action steps all start to help you change your mindset because yeah. you start acting in a way that is different than before. And as you act in a way, you are creating social proof that you're this person who does this and therefore yeah. you're more likely to keep doing it. And right. so that's kind of a very, uh, a very over, a very uh, brief overview of kind of how certain, how you can change your mindset in different ways. Yeah. I think that's so important because I, I think, you know, so many people, like I mentioned earlier, fall back on themselves. But I think, I think one, like you said, journaling is great. I think sometimes when you, when you journal, you come to a realization that you didn't even realize, like the light bulb goes off. Like yeah. I've, I've always been like a big fan of journaling and I even created a journal. And sometimes when I'm writing in the journal, like things I didn't even realize, like 
come to realization, you know, like sometimes our biggest fears, our biggest emotions and things come about, you know, why, are, you know, maybe we're scared to lose more weight. Maybe we're afraid of failure, you know, maybe, you know, we, you know, someone told us in the past that, oh, you can't do it. You know, you don't have what it takes, you know, and these things like, you know, those, those negative emotions get repressed and sometimes they stop us from doing things and we don't even realize it, you know, especially if people say things more than once, people start to believe it, you know, and I think it's all about believing in yourself. And I love the idea of mindset because, you know, it helps you really, you know, connect with yourself and your body and also learn to actually believe in yourself and, and gain that resilience to get fit and be able to take care of yourself and be the person you always wanted to be. Yeah. I, I think when it comes to believing in yourself, and I'm not sure, I'm kind of back and forth on this topic of believing yourself because mm -hmm. I think actions is the most important aspect because you can, if you don't believe you can lose weight, but you take the actions you need to, to lose weight, you're going to lose weight, whether you believe right. it or not, as long as you take the right actions. Yes. But I do think believing yourself uh, plays a part in the longevity aspect of actually doing it. I think there's a yeah. correlation, like not, not a direct causation there, but there's a correlation there of like, the more you believe in yourself, the more likely you're to do it. And I think part of that's building momentum. You know, if you take small action steps, right. And you count action steps that you take as a win, yeah. what you're doing is you're creating social proof. Social right. proof is how you start to believe in yourself because it builds momentum towards your goal. Number one, so you start to see progress. Yes. It shows you, you can look back one month ago, wow, I did all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the, you know, for example, you know, I started podcasting, you know, uh, years ago, right? And I, well, I wasn't a podcaster, but yeah. I look back three months ago, I did 50 episodes. I guess I'm a podcaster now, right? It's social proof. I created yeah. social proof, just one little episode at a time. Right. Same thing with same thing weight loss. I can't lose weight. Well, you lost one pound. Well, yeah, no, no, you lost one pound accept yeah. it. It's great. Let's build another pound. Let's build another pound. So those little action steps create social proof and social proof helps you build momentum, like a snowball down a mountain, or just kind of builds and builds and builds. Yeah. And then you start as that gets bigger. That's you quote unquote, either getting more results or believing yourself even more. So I think both are true at the same time. Oh, definitely. Now what's your feel about like eating because like some, you know, you could exercise and you could take care of yourself, but then if you're going and you're eating a pizza and you're, you know, you're gobbling down a calzone and you're, you're going, you know, cause I had one person that, you know, they go, I like to exercise. And I like to be fit so I can eat whatever I want. Well, that's kind of contradictory. You know, it's like, you're not really being fit by putting all these toxins and bad foods in your body. So it's like, it goes hand in hand. Like what's your, what's your intake about not just the mechanics of fitness, but also about what we put in our body. So we have mindset. What's your view on health on like putting what types of foods and stuff like that? Well, I think it's under the same umbrella. I think you use the same process for any issue that you have. So it's not like, so the process of before of all these different things of the, the journaling, the reflection, the meditation, the goals, that's all under any specific, you know, fitness goal, health category, including nutrition, if that's your specific issue. Gotcha. But in terms of, but in terms of like the importance of nutrition. So number one, I think, I think working out is extraordinarily important for bone health and you know making sure you have just physical longevity to do things you want to do when you get older right when you're 85 do you want to be in a wheelchair or do you want to be walking around and oh, yeah. there's there's a real reality if you see people walking with those little uh, i don't know what they're called but like the four cane yep. mm -hmm. walkers and they're hunched over like a candy cane like which, is, yeah. like which is, breaks my heart like i imagine for the most part they did not take care of themselves 20, 30 years ago, and it results into this. We don't see the results of our non-action until it's too late. Exactly. And so convincing someone of that and they're going to be them is very difficult. Um, but I'd say from a health, from a nutrition perspective, number one, you know, you you have to do what you want to do. I think inherently, like it's like if, or at least you have to do what you know you need to do in terms of what the goal is, right? So if your goal is I just want to be in good shape and look good and I'm going to eat like crap, go for it. I mean, that's your thing. As long as you know that, look, you're probably not going to be a healthy person. And we've all heard those stories of this person who is ripped out of their mind, you know, dad of three, 45 in great shape, works out every morning. Yeah. But then, you know, smokes cigarettes and drinks a lot and eats like crap, but he works out so much. It doesn't matter. And then they drop that at 50 years old, which is yeah. terrible, sad. And so you can't, it's hard to see the consequences of putting processed food in your body. Do I do it? A hundred percent. Do I do it 
in mitigated amounts, a hundred percent. I'm very strategic of when I eat pizza. I love pizza. It's so good. Burgers are amazing. Yeah. You ever have like a bacon jelly burger? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I like, can't live without it, but I don't do it every day. It's, it's a treat. Yeah. Um, so I do think understanding what you're putting in your body is a, a good way to realize what you shouldn't do and right. realizing that processed food is literally almost not meant to be eaten by the yeah. human body. It's, it's processed for a reason. So I think number one, educating is just very important to say like, so I always have like my five or six ingredients. I tell people do not eat. Like if you have it once in a while, great. But as part of a regular uh, lifestyle choices, don't eat these foods if you want to be relatively healthy. And right. you know, like things like high fructose corn syrup, just don't eat it. Don't do it. Right. right. Um, things like anything partially hydrogenated, which mostly in peanut butter. Uh, so yeah. get like better peanut butters, things like nitrites and nitrates, which is like deli meat. Don't eat those. Uh, yeah. And there's a handful of other ones. Like if you just eliminate a handful of these um, nu nutrients, these ingredients yeah. from diet, from your diet, then it's, you're going to feel a lot better. Yeah. And um, I think the last part of it really is you can't outwork of uh, seldom seldom can you outwork a bad diet if you work out and do all this work and lift weights and do cardio and all these different things to really make your phys you know physically healthy but then yeah. you're eating like crap you might not see great results or, right. or or at least less results than you want because eating healthy is probably 80 percent of the battle for real yeah. i mean it really is i mean working out is probably like it's hard because of working. I, I use working out and recovery and kind of the same. So working out is probably 20% and eating health. So if you eat health, do nothing but eat healthy. Like for the rest of your life, you'll, you're at a B minus. Like yeah. that's pretty solid. Like I, at least in my mind, some might say less, some might say more, but I think like that's a good place to start. Cause if you work out and you're crazy and you're perfect, that's only 20% of the battle. You still have to right. eat and, and feed your body in the right way. And you can't right. outwork a bad diet for the most part. Now yeah. there is something towards if you want to go do cardio for an extra you know, 40 minutes to burn the extra 200 calories, so you can eat a little bit more yeah. and have that cookie. I, you know, look, I, look, you got to live your life. I think there's a, there's a cost benefit to everything. Right. I am definitely not the person to say, don't do that because I will do that. I, yeah. When Thanksgiving comes up, I will work out an extra hour that day on the, on the Stairmaster to burn 700 calories so that <laughs> I feel better about the 10,000 I'm about to eat. I mean, it's not, good. Yeah. but I, so yeah, I mean, it's a matter of what you, I think it's a matter of what people want, but understanding the implications of what they're doing. And I don't think people quite understand the implications. Some people still think a cheeseburger from Burger King isn't that bad for you. And it's mis <laughs> it's miserable for you. So yeah. I think putting that into perspective is key. If you understand that and still choose to do that with all of your knowledge, then that, you know, that's on you. Like, you know, then, then it's not a goal you really care about. Right. And, right. Then, and I go down that direction. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I also, you know, I know you didn't want to talk too much about the mechanics of fitness, but I have a question for you. I see some people, they, they exercise five days a week and they're in the gym for two, three hours, grinding, yeah. grinding, grinding. No. But I hear so many people, so many fitness instructors, they say, don't do it, you know, like maybe like three days a week and two days recovery, or you could just do exercising for three days and, you know, but don't overwork your body because you're actually in the, in the long run, you're actually hurting your body. Like what's true and what's not true? Great question. And I think if you ask a hundred fitness professionals, they would all give you different answers because a mm -hmm. lot of it, because the science isn't settled. I mean, it, there's, it's coming out and there's a lot of good things out there, but uh, it's constantly, I mean, we used to think eggs were bad for us. Okay. So just, right. you know, in a nutshell, things are always evolving. Yeah. Here's what I tell my clients and this is what seems to work. And again, I work with the general population. I don't work with athletes. So this would be different for athletes. I don't work with any you know, medical conditions. So that it'd be different, but for just someone who just wants to see a little bit of results, someone who just wants to kind of get going, my yeah. recommendation is pure and simple. Number one, anything I say, build up to. Okay, right. so if you're not, if you're doing nothing, do not do what I say. You need to build up to it. Okay, that's yes. my first point. I don't like when people just jump in. Another reason people fail at their New Year's resolutions: they go from zero to five days a week and they can't do it for more than two weeks, and that's yeah, they just fail. Um, they burn out way, way too quick. So frequency: how often should you go? My recommendation is you should work out in some capacity three to five times a week. Five being the, I think five being, four to five being optimal, three being the minimal to really see any sort of like real results. Right. Um, and if you're going to, if you're going to strength train, giving muscles time to recover at least 24 to 36 hours in between is very important because recovery is just as important as working out because right. if you don't recover, because basically every time you work out, you're tearing fibers yes. and they need time to heal. And that's the recovery. That's your sleep. That's nutrition. That's the recovery period. Uh, although it doesn't feel like we're doing anything, it, it's almost gets it almost gets addicting to keep working out over and over again yeah it's like 
it, it doesn't actually, I mean, again, depending on what your goals are, it doesn't actually help the general population as much as you would think. I think the recovery is great. So look, if you're someone who's like, I work out zero times, go to one, then go to two, get to three, see how three feels. If you can do four, do it four. I don't recommend more than five. Now, caveat, let's say one of your days is yoga and, and you want to work out five other days. That's fine, right? It's a, it's a different kind of, or you want to play basketball. You want to do this. Again, make it work for you. But I'd say five yeah. days, three, you know, three to five days a week of working out. You can use the other days to rest. That's totally fine. Again, if you're not seeing results, trial and error. Okay, so I'm not seeing results with three days. Well, then either it hasn't been enough time right. or we have to do we have to do more than what we're doing. It's all trial and error. But I'd say three to five days. Right. The second thing is how long. Yeah, I, I think anyone who works out for two hours is crazy. Uh, I don't I don't understand it. I think, again, not athletes, not bodybuilders, not physique shows, general population. I mean, hell, half us only get an hour lunch break. So by the time you get to your office gym or the local gym, you only have 35 to 40 minutes plus. I mean, so I generally recommend anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour uh, okay. for a workout. I go over sometimes because I'm you know, things happen. I'm not counting sauna. I'm not counting cardio and this. Like, for example, if you're doing a, a resistance training session, yeah. I would recommend no more than like 60 minutes, right? If you can't fit it in in 60 minutes, then you can't fit it in in 60 minutes and you should do something, you need to figure that out. Right. Um, and, and if you want to do cardio on top of that, since that's a different style of exercise, I wouldn't count that as towards the hour. You can, you can do that. It's just a different workout. Um, right. But in terms of like one specific workout, no more than 60 minutes. It, 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 you could legitimately, and I want to be very clear, you could legitimately see at least from a uh, a health perspective, significant benefits just by doing intent brisk walking for 20 minutes a day. It's yeah. been shown to lower all cause mortality and in, in health disease in, in disease by like 30, 40 percent. I mean, don't quote me on the exact number there, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable how just walking at a brisk rate will like give you significant health benefits. Not saying you're going to lose a lot of weight with it, yeah. but just health benefits alone is unbelievable. So yeah, so three to five days a week, no more than 60 minutes and whatever you can fit in there, build your way up. And if it's good, if you can only do 20 minutes, do 20 minutes, right? And right. you might need, maybe you have to do, so let's say you're doing five days a week at 20 minutes. So, okay, so maybe you want to do six days a week at 20 minutes because it's less than the hour, right? So, yeah. you know, for me, what I do is I do about five days a week at 60 minutes. And that's that's my thing. I've been doing that for years. Um, and But everyone kind of has their threshold of what they'd like to do. But yeah. that's where I would, that's where I would shoot for. And once you get there, analyze, okay, here's where I'm at. It's been a month. And eh, it's been two months. Eh, okay, maybe I need to switch a little thing here and there. And then you you can right. go. But I almost, I can't guarantee anything because I'm not there with you, but I can almost guarantee you'll see some sort of good result when you when you hit that kind of ratio. Right. I, you know, I had a friend that used to, she had a huge lake and if she walked it twice, it was three miles. And she was doing that every day. And I tell you, she dropped weight and she toned up like, like yeah. there was no tomorrow just by walking around that lake twice every day. And, you know, so walking is really powerful. People don't realize, but sometimes you don't, you know, not everybody has the ability. They might have conditions. They could walk, but they can't do the the hard grind in the gym. But walking is, is, is so powerful. They say it's, I, you know, I heard that it's even more powerful than running. It's better for you. You know, you could actually just by, just by walking, you know, a mile a day or just by, you know, whatever your body can you tolerate, you know, putting some walking into your, your daily, uh, your, your daily routine or, you know, sometime during the week could actually have an extreme effect, you know, improvement in your health as well. I mean, say with the mileage on your body, if you, if you're not, if you're, let's say you're walking in the course of a year, a couple miles, cause you're sedentary and then you start doing a mile a day, think about the percentage increase in mileage that you're doing, which is number of steps, which is how active you are. So if you're maintaining weight at 40 miles a year, and then you bump it up to 80 miles a year and nothing else changes, you're going to lose weight and you're going to build muscle because you weren't working these things before. So yeah, I think from a, just from a, uh, a tactical point like that, that's very, that's very true. And you know, when, so what are some of the steps, like step one, like when you, know, you talked about mindset and we can, you know, start by doing like maybe meditation and, you know, journaling and doing some of that stuff and uh you know changing the way you eat and then exercise you know putting some exercise in your daily diet is there any other things that you really like to stress that you feel are, are really beneficial for people that would actually have a big impact on the way they feel and the way they look i think one of the biggest issues we have is a lack of we have a certain narrative in our head of how things should go and that creates a perception 
of how we view the world and how we view ourselves. Yeah. So, and not to get woo woo or anything, but I'm, I'm getting to a, a better point is, okay, so you have this perception. And yeah. so when you create goals, your goal tends to be a linear goal. So if, I, if let's say you want to lose 40 pounds, okay, you set up this goal, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. So I usually say about a pound a week is, is a reasonable goal to hit. So 40 weeks lose 40 pounds uh, is a reason is a relatively reasonable goal. But let's say on week 15, you're only down 10 pounds. And by week 20, you're only down 12 pounds. Yeah. And what happens is mentally, we thought it was going to look like that. Just yeah. no issues, but we didn't, and we didn't realize it was going to kind of do this thing. You're going to gain some weight, lose some weight, and you're going to go down eventually, but it won't be as what we thought. I think when you prepare for obstacles, mm -hmm. that really does help along the way. And I'm not saying you have to know what the obstacle is, but understand that the path you're taking, there's going to be rocks, there's going to be rivers, there's going to be things that are in your way. And if you, for example, you're not going to go hiking um, in heels. Like if you know you're going hiking, you're not going to wear heels. <laughs> okay. Like, and that's what, but that's what you're doing. You're putting on heels uh, and you're trying to go hiking, but you don't realize it's a hike. So we have to yeah. identify that it's a hike. So I think changing the narrative of how it should be or how this has to happen and that creating that perception of, wait, okay, every week I'm gonna lose a pound and then you get on the scale and then you're discouraged because it's not what you wanted. But what you wanted, what you thought you wanted in that moment isn't, it wasn't a, a real thing because you made it up in your head. Yeah. I think changing that narrative, when you go into a goal, trying to figure out all the pain points ahead of time and where you're probably going to fall short and where you're yeah. probably going to struggle and making sure those are aware. So like when you're having your goal, right? Here's what you, exercise I do. I, I set a goal. Okay, what are things that are going to stop me from achieving? So I'll give you a real specific example I just did. Yeah. I want to learn how to do a muscle up. And for those who don't want to muscle up, it's, it's like that CrossFit thing where you do a pull up and then you go into a dip on a bar. I can't okay. do it. I have the strength to do it. I just I don't have the mechanics. So yeah. I'm working on it. I wrote down my goal by the, you know, by in six months, I want to do this. I wrote down the obstacles. Obstacle number one is after an hour long workout, I am not going to want to do this. I'm going to be exhausted. No, my not. arms are going to be tired. Mentally, I'm like, I'm done. I'm out of here. Right. That's obstacle number one. And yeah. obstacle number two is pure forgetfulness. I will forget to do this because it's not part of the main workout. It's an accessory. Right. And so I identified obstacles in my way. And then I was able to plan around those obstacles. Yeah. So for example, if you're trying to lose 40 pounds in 40 weeks and you know, okay, I'm not going to lose weight every single week. Maybe that you push the goal out to 50 weeks and you give yourself a 10 week, like, okay, there's going to be 10 weeks in here where I have a wedding. I have this, I plan out things that are going to happen that yeah. way. When things don't go your way mentally, it's less discouraging and you're way more optimistic and therefore you're more lucky to keep going. So that's one thing that people can do. I think a second thing is I have the, I have the three laws, um, the three fundamental principles of success that, that at least for fitness and nutrition that I usually use. Yeah. Number one is consistency. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be consistent. Definitely. Like you can't, like it, it took you, you years to get out of shape. It's going <laughs> to take more than two months to get back into shape. hundred percent. Uh, number two is progression. Like I said, ramping up progress yeah. over time. Like how do you get better? at what you're doing. If you're going to run one mile at 10 miles an hour yeah. every single time, then how do you, or that's a, a 10 minute mile every time yeah. and you do that for the rest of your life, there's the law of diminishing returns comes into play. And then it's a, you're not going to see the same result. So maybe right. I go 1.1 mile every so often. I just slowly, and then 1.2. And then I do yeah. it every three weeks. I increase by that. I just do a slight increase or I go, I just go longer or I do an incline, or I go faster, or whatever it might be. Uh, so slow progression along the way. Yeah. And then patience. Patience is so key. And I, I'm going to wrap patience into when you have a goal, the goal shouldn't be your goal. So the, the goal I try to get people to go to is if your goal is to, and I'm using 40 pounds as a catch-all goal because most people have yeah. weight loss. So it's any goal you have, let's just use 40 pounds as our avatar. Let's say your goal is to lose 40 pounds. Right. What happens when you are finished with losing the 40 pounds, you have two options, really two options. One, yeah. you're proud of yourself. This is great. And guess what? Your friends have a wedding and there's cake and you've been avoiding that for months, but you lost the 40 pounds. So you're having the cake and yeah, everyone root for me. And then the next event comes. And then the next day, oh, that donut looks so good. I'm gonna, what happens in three months? You gained all the weight back. I mean, if you look at the, uh, what's it called? The show, um, 
the biggest loser. Yeah. And they did a study like seven years later that every single person that lost all that weight in the biggest loser has gained it all back and no more. No way. Really? And their, meta- and their metabolism. I think it's like 85% of them. Uh, yeah. And their metabolism is worse than it was because of the, of the crash diet. And oh, part wow. of the reason was they didn't have any strategy to keep off the weight. And so, um, which is a crazy thing to, to think about because you lost all this weight. You're very proud of yourself, but they didn't have any of the um, the know how to keep it off. Yeah. And they didn't have a goal. Once you hit the goal, it's like, I don't need to work as hard anymore. I hit the achievement mm. versus the goal really should be, I want to live a healthier lifestyle. Why? Yes. Write down your list of reasons why. Part of yes. which is I want to be 40 pounds lighter. And then you hammer one of the goals in the objectives. So I call it like an objective. My objective is to live a healthy lifestyle. Why? X, Y, and Z. And here are some of my individual goals. If I lose the 40 pounds, awesome underneath my larger objective of just living a better life yeah then i will keep going with whatever i'm doing because i haven't accomplished what i need to accomplish because my accomplishment is is evergreen it's just it's there all the time but if you just i want to lose 40 pounds and hit it you're probably not going to work as hard and you'll probably yeah. gain at least some of it back or you need to manufacture a new goal to keep yourself disciplined enough or motivated enough to keep going and yeah. i find that to be very problematic and I think that's a lot. You see that in sports. And once you win the Super Bowl or the championship, mo- it's so hard to repeat because I imagine that a lot of people, once they achieve that one goal that they've always wanted to achieve, it's like, well, I achieved it. What I could take some time off. I'm awesome. I'm great. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, well, no, if you want to win again, you got to work just as hard yeah. every single, if not harder, every single year. And so it's what people think, and, and they create this paradigm in their head is once I achieve this goal, I'm done. And yeah. that's just simply not the reality of the situation. So I think changing that narrative in your head is another thing. Takeaway today, if your goal is to lose 40 pounds, why is it your goal? Well, I want to live better. That should be your goal. I want to live better and whatever it might be. And then you can have the, the the strategic goals that you can aim for underneath that. It's a little nitpicky, but I do think changing that in someone's mindset is a very important thing to do to keep oh, someone definitely. going uh, in perpetuity. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. I I think that's very important to stress to people because you know once people hit that goal, they that's it. You know they they forget what you know where they were before and how easy it is to get back there. And it's it's a co- consistent, like you said, consistency. It's a consistent lifestyle change that they have to do every day. And they making goals and creating that healthy lifestyle and just doing it day by day until it's so natural that you don't even think about it. And you have to even you know you have to consistently just be disciplined with yourself. You have to be disciplined, you know? And it sucks. And it sucks. Like, I'm not, like, I am like I just walked to the gym today and it's like, I'm in Chicago and it's slushing and it's cold and it's gross yeah. and I, it's a 10 minute walk. I don't want to do it. And it's, I'm not, so it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's one of those things where I, if you can look into the future and look at what other people are doing and yeah. not taking care of themselves and you're like, what do I want to be? And it's funny because fitness is one of the few things in life that's pretty much guaranteed in terms of if you do X, you're going to get Y. And yet yeah. we have so much trouble because what we want is our is our, is our our current environment. We don't want to change our environment because we're comfortable. But a little bit of that uncomfortableness, a little bit of that annoyance goes a long way in long term playing with your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids, not having a wheelchair, you know, being able to play sports till you're 75 or eight, like doing all those things don't just happen. It takes yeah. a lot of work the, or not having to pay for a nursing home or medical bill. I mean, I think the number one reason people go bankrupt when they're when they're when they're retired is medical bills, oh, which is like, sure. oh, my God, so you spent your entire life making money to retire to lose it on medical bills, which probably could have been avoided. If we just, and I'm, I'm being reductive, I know, but like, no, no, if you I just work, if you just, if you just worked out three days a week and just did a little bit, it, which I know you're putting a lot of time into it, but that's, that's the goal, right? To, to, to live a longevity life, yeah. but it takes effort. It takes time and, and it's not fun, but it, 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 the, the dividends that you get out of it are, are there. And it's yeah. one of those things where it's, you have to, but you have to put that in perspective. Otherwise you're not going to do it. Otherwise it's like, this is a waste of time. This is stupid. I don't, well, and by the way, if you don't care, you don't care. I'm not trying to pushing. Anyway. I'm just saying the people who do care, that's yeah. how you got to think about it. Otherwise it's, it's very difficult to keep it going. Oh, that's a hundred percent true. hundred percent true. 
And I've always wondered, you know, what about what's your intake on like the people who have hit middle age, their metabolism is slower now, you know, they've, their body is plateauing, it gets to that comfortable weight, it doesn't want to budge, you know, what's your suggestions for those type of people who are getting so frustrated because no matter what they do, no matter what they try, they feel like they're stuck at that weight and they can't, they can't budge no matter what they do. It just seems like it, you go on the scale and it's always either a pound up or a pound down, or it's that weight and they can't get rid of it. So I think there's, uh, there's an umbrella thing uh, in that question. Um, but I, I interviewed someone, um, you know, relative in the last year, his whole thing is abs at 60. <laughs> uh, and he's not, it's not some, you know, genetic, he works out, he, he goes at it. I would argue, and I'm not there. So people come back, oh, you don't understand. And that's fair enough, right? Like I'm not, I'm not middle-aged, right? I don't have that experience, but right. from training clients, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I would like to understand what you're doing right? because although the metabolism slows down, although it is definitely harder to gain muscle. Mm -hmm. All of the things are still possible in a very smart way. The yes. question is, are you doing what's needed to be done? For example, my dad would kind of fit this description. Uh, you know, he, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty set in his ways. He, he knows what he likes. He likes what he likes. He does what he likes. So he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm 60. I don't care. What. Great. But that also, and, and he gets very frustrated with the scale. It goes up, down 10 pounds every year. It's up and down <laughs> constant cycle. Yeah. And he's like, I, I eat healthy. I work out. What the hell? And, and I think what we do is we take that, we take the, I work kind of hard and we extrapolate it to, I work so hard. I can't possibly right. achieve more. And yeah. I think that is a mental shift to take of, are you actually working hard on the right things that are aligned with you want with what you want? Or are do you think you just work hard and do you think you're just doing the right things? And maybe we need to, because maybe there's one thing that you're doing that's causing all of this. You don't, you, you don't even know right. or that you're eating food that you think is healthy. That is packed with calories. True, true story. Like my dad's like, here's how many calories. I don't understand why I'm not losing weight. And I, I literally had him write down everything he ate. Like I'm like, give, just give it to me. And I found that he had 600 additional calories every single day Wow! Because he he'd eat a bag of almonds, and he didn't oh. realize how many calories it was. And I'm like, I'm like my guy, the reason you're not losing weight is this bag of almonds because yeah. you're you're eating, you're eating all healthy food. Your diet's great, but you're overdoing it on calories because of this. You don't realize this is a lot of calories. Like this is yeah. a lot. Like I'll gain weight with this. And so there's <laughs> little things that we do. So I would argue that although yes, it is harder, it's more difficult. Uh, I think the goals might change at that point as well. But it's one of those things where identifying, are we doing what we need to do? What are we doing? Is it working? And what can we change? I think we don't do that enough because we get very comfortable in our situation at 50, at 60, at 70. Yes. That's what we've done our whole life. And I would just put it to you to maybe it's okay to take some of those self-reflections say, am I working as hard as I possibly could yeah. for this? Or am I just working enough to feel good about it and enough to get angry about it? And I right. think that, and by the way, if you don't want to work harder, that's okay. I'm not saying you have to, right. but sometimes to achieve a goal, we have to work harder than we wanted to, than we actually wanted to. Yes. And we don't realize like, this is what hard felt like, feels like, like when you're exhausted and tired and you don't want to do it. And this is terrible. You're not motivated. You're like, well, that's what hard, we knew this was going to be hard. That's what hard feels like. And yeah. why, why now you know what it feels like. Now you know what you should expect. And I think, um, I think that's one thing I would say to like, yes, your metabolism slowing down. You have to do things differently. You're not going to be bench pressing most likely 300 <laughs> pounds anymore, but you can play pickleball. Pickleball yeah. is great. Great cardio. Yeah. You can go on the elliptical. Yeah. Like there's certain things you still can do to stay in shape and, and eat healthy and all those different things. So I still think right. that there's a way now, are you going to have a six pack ab when you're at 70? You know, I, look, I, me personally, I don't think most people can do that. I mean, it's yeah. tough, but can it's you tough. still be in shape? Yeah, of course you can, but you might have to change things. And are you going to allow yourself to do that? And I think yeah. that's a big question because we can be stubborn. I'm stubborn. I'm only 30, you know, 31. So I mean, yeah. I can imagine if you're 60 that you know, you're going to be stubborn with some things that you want to do. And I think that's, that's tough. And uh, I know I've rambled a little bit, but one thing I want to get to that point of was there's an umbrella to this. Yeah. It's basically you could do anything you want. And there's two ways to do it. One is through time equity. And one is through, I guess, money equity, right? So mm -hmm. money and time, uh, equity, equity. Um, <laughs> and you either have to invest a lot of time for, so the more time you spend, the less money, 
Yes. All right. So YouTube, Google, listen to podcasts, all, listen to everything that we're doing, right? And you'll learn, you'll pick it up, trial, error, trial, error, trial, error. Right. Or if you're like, I don't have time and I want to spend money, you lower the amount of time, you increase the money you spend so that someone can show you what to do and you skip all the, you skip the learning curve, yeah. right? And so if you're someone who wants to do that, I think you have to think about it that way. It's like, I'm not seeing results. I'm not doing this. Well, have you put in the time to learn it all? Yeah. Or have you put, or have you put in the money to learn it all? And, right. and, and, and there's nuance within that, but I think people should think about it in that perspective because that's how you'll get things done. I mean, for yeah. example, when I was first starting out, I took the time to build my own website. I did all, I, I learned all the technical stuff. Yeah. It was that or pay a thousand dollars. And I was like, I'm not paying, I don't have any money. I'm not paying a thousand dollars. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. Looking back on it, like once you do it, you're like, wow, this is taking out like tens and 20 and hundreds of hours ago. How much was it? That sounds good. I'm going to pay for it. And so it just depends on kind of what your need is at that time of, yeah. of time versus money, but that's how you're going to learn. So if you've done it on your own and you can't seem to get results, I highly recommend that you find someone that can get you results in your field. Oh, um, definitely. And if you're someone who's like, I don't have money right now, fine. How often are you on YouTube or on you and Google listening to videos like this yeah. to learn what you need to learn, writing it down and then implementing it and see if it works for you and doing it again, right? right. So are, are you doing that or are you just thinking you're doing that, right? And I yeah. think that that's where people can get lost in translation a lot. Oh, I think you're hundred percent right. I think people sometimes, you know, they, they don't want to spend the money, but they don't realize by, you know, how much time it's going to take and how much, you know, and it's not always easy to do it by yourself. You know, sometimes you need a coach, you need somebody helping you and guiding you along the way and giving you the instructions and the motivation and that plan, you know, it's, you know, you could listen to a thousand videos, but you know, everybody is different. Like we mentioned earlier in, in the podcast and what you what that person's doing, it's working for them, may not be right for your body and your structure and your body type. And, you know, so then you need to go and you need to get that help. And someone that has experience in the field can say, okay, you know, you're, you're doing X, Y, and Z. And this is why, you know, you, you feel and you, and you're, you're not at where you want to be. You know, so it, it, it is sometimes it's it's more than worth it to really pay a professional to help you. And in the, in the outcome, you know, you you will receive and, and attain what you're looking for and and also learn at, at the same time because they're teaching you at the same time. So you can continue it even when they're not there anymore. Yeah, I think learning is a big um you know, a, personally, a big issue in the industry and fitness, because a lot of it's based on not learning yeah. and just using them, using a trainer and, and, and constantly just buying over and over again. You're not learning anything. Right. I think like that's, kind of, I think that's, if you're that person who needs the accountability, then go for it. But if you're not that person and like, you just want to lose weight and be done, then if you're not learning, you're wasting your time. And I think exactly. like that's a big thing. And so as long as you're learning along the way, so you can replicate what your what the knowledge base is, whether it's time or money, uh, I think that's a very powerful thing that people need to start doing, or at least more people need to start doing. I have a quick question for you before we start to close. What do you think about this Ozempic trend? You know, everybody is using things like Ozempic or something similar to it. People are losing weight. You see celebrities, you know, showing off how they look. You know, these people are taking pills to help them lose weight and help their insulin and, and their sugar levels go down and, and they're feeling full and they're not having the appetite they did. But what do you think is going to happen in the long run? You know, maybe like after, because I think you could only go on those pills for X amount of time and then they take you off of it. What do you think is going to happen to all these people that are losing so much weight in such a short period of time? Besides the sagging skin, they're probably going to get. Yeah. What else do you think is going to, you know, what 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 do you think is going to happen with this 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 phase? I want to preface this for everyone that I am very much a natural fitness person, which means I, my field is not medicine or mm -hmm. supplements. I, I yes. just don't know a lot about it. I'm I, the, only, the only supplement I take is like protein powder just to, I don't want to eat, I don't want to eat more meat. So I take protein powder. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know a lot about Exempic. I know the basics, right? It's about, it's, it's for diabetes, not right. for people just to yes. lose weight. So if you're not, if you don't have diabetes, I really don't recommend it because I think 
there's still a lot to be known about this pill. Uh, I know that if you do take it, it works. I do know it works. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I do know you cannot take a certain dose. Like you can only get to a certain dosage because if you go higher, it creates. I don't know the exact thing that happens, but it's not good for you. Right. When you go past a certain dose, so there's a very specific dose you have to take. Yeah. Uh, I know they're running out of it because people are taking it when they shouldn't be taking it. Yeah. Um, I do think unless so, I do think number one, the if unless you're working out. Uh, the weight you're losing is also muscle and skeletal muscle mass. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not just fat. So understand when you say you lose weight, there's multiple categories of weight. It's not just fat. There's muscle right. you can lose. And inherently that's not the goal. The goal is to lose fat, not muscle. So I do know it takes off a bunch of muscle. If you're not, if you're not at least not resistance training, I don't think there's been any studies done on yeah. resistance training with Ozempic. I'm not sure. And again, I'm not the expert. So someone yeah. better than me, feel free. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue that unless it changes your biology, fundamentally in terms of like your hunger cells and and certain things, which probably isn't good. Right. Uh, I would argue that once you're off Ozempic, it will be treated the same way as a regular diet. Yeah. So I view Ozempic as a very effective diet. Right. Um, so for example, like if you do keto properly, which I have done, you can lose a lot of weight and you can lose it quickly and you do well. The issue is once you stop following the protocol and if you don't do it the correct way and if you, and if you don't learn, you'll probably gain all the weight back. Not saying right. you will, but if you just don't do it the right way. Yeah. Ozepic's probably similar. Uh, uh, again, I, I will I'll wait to see kind of what comes out. I don't recommend it to anyone because I don't know enough about it, but yeah. I don't, and I don't, and let, again, unless your doctor recommends it. And even then I'm kind of like, you know, or you could just go to the gym and work out. Like you could just go on the treadmill and, and just do it versus taking this pill, which we don't yeah. actually know the full side effects yet of this thing. Um, so right. I would argue that if you take Ozepic, lose a bunch of weight and get off of it, unless there's a change biologically that I imagine you'll probably gain all the way back, or at least you'll gain a decent amount back because you haven't gained the skills. Cause if it suppresses your hunger, what happens yeah. when your hunger is not suppressed, you're going right. to keep eating. Now, maybe it's a long-term suppressant and I'm not aware of that. And that could be the case, but um, I think that generally speaking, I would treat it as if anything else you need to learn and still build your fundamental base. This is not a cheat code. Cause I do believe that in the, in 10 years, we'll probably, I mean, how many FDA drugs have been recalled? Yeah, uh, in the last thousands. I mean, it's just these things. Oh, we didn't realize the side effect. So I, I think that there's still probably stuff we haven't learned about it yet. I don't necessarily recommend it unless it's right. like absolutely needed. Um, but I do think you'll probably gain the weight back. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you're off. Yeah, I don't know. So I just uninformed, wild guess. You probably gain the weight back once you're off it, unless yeah. it does change you for some reason that it, it would stay. That would be my that'd be my guess. You know, you know, I was just asking because I see so many people on it now and I see so many people lose a massive amount of weight. But then, like we said, if you don't change your lifestyle and, and a lot of times I would see people like losing, not losing weight, they're complaining, they're eating healthy. But then I would see the quantity of food they're eating and then they would eat a salad, but then they'd pull all this dressing on. Well, and dressing's it's like terrible. It's, I mean, it's terrible. It's toxic. It's like, it's like, you know, you're trying to lose weight. A teaspoon like is like 200 calories. It's like 120 calories. 120 calories. It's like that's yeah. how much like. <laughs> Yeah, we we have a Portillo's. Over, I'm not sure Portillo, Portillo's in Chicago, mainly in Chicago, and there's like the amazing salad dressing. It's like this big, and it's 250 calories. But I'm like, it's just it's crazy. But like, yeah, if you account for it, it's great. But yeah, I I, I think this uh, again. I'm more than happy to be wrong, and I and I and I you know obviously in 10 years if I'm totally wrong on this, great. But I do happen to think this might be a one of those like magic pill things that yeah. we. We, every 10 years something comes out of this is amazing this works look at this and people do it it works and then yeah oh crap like this only works if you keep it and i shouldn't be keeping because it it's expensive or it's actually not good for your liver i don't know who knows yeah. I, I don't i don't foresee it being like this is the cure to overweight or obesity yeah. uh it will help if you utilize it in a certain way but i'm not sure this is like gonna put trainers out of a job or anything like that yeah, I don't think it will. Like, you know, I've seen like over the course of the years, even when we were kids, they had they had one pill. It was like speed and it gave people like super energy and people yeah, were losing like, weight, you know, and it's like, you know, and then then the fad kind of went away or, you know, or they took it off the market. I don't know what it was, but, you know, and then all these people started gaining their weight back, you know, because it was like the, you know, it, it made them like feel like super, super person. They were like, you know, and then, then, you know, then they didn't have the pill anymore and boom, they gained the weight back, you know? Yeah.
So we'll see. I think it's a TBD. Give it ten years, and we'll see kind of where. And maybe it's already been out for a while, but like it's just it's it clearly is the new the new craze. And I'm yes, I'm not into it. Uh, and I don't think anyone. Should, if you're not in a dangerous diabetic level, I don't recommend it. I don't I don't recommend it anyway. But like yeah. unless your doctor is like unless you're morbidly obese and your doctor recommends it, that I probably wouldn't even go near the thing. I would just try and change your lifestyle because that's probably the most effective way yeah uh, to do it which you'll need to do anyway uh so you know that's my that's my take on it my uneducated wild guess on <laughs> don't, don't listen to me so if you had to give like maybe three or four takeaways and maybe suggestions to the people that you know that were listening to this podcast that, you know things that we emphasize during our talk what would you like to like you know um make people aware of what are some takeaways that you'd like people to like kind of fix stay in their head Top so top takeaways that you can do today. Number one is uh, find a uh, mechanism that you liked, whether it's reflection, meditation, uh, journaling, one of one of those things, and just try it. Just start doing it a little bit here and there. It could be the five four three two one method uh, that I stole from Mel Robbins. Do, pick one method and start trying to figure out what's going on because that that'll help you identify potential problems and obstacles that are stopping you. Yeah. Number two, uh, I would say your reason why is so important. Your reason why creates an internal support system when the external support fails, yeah. uh, when no one's supporting you, when no one cares about it, when no one understands what you're going through, your why will get you through the hard times. Your why is the reason that you're going to get up at five in the morning, in the cold, in the snow, unice your car, sit in the car for 10 minutes, freezing. Cold. Like, it, it's the reason you do all that crap. Yeah. So you're, like, your whys are so important. And I, I would say number three, we actually didn't talk about, but it's, it's kind of a subsidiary of why is make it visual read some of your whys every single day on your desktop on your on your on your mirror on your fridge i'm looking around like read it every day because the daily stressors that that really are unimportant for the most part uh yeah. you know, 95% bs will override your will to do things after a long day of work and you're and you're planning on working out yeah. like i like how many reasons have we given ourselves not to work out after a long day of work? Exactly. Your reason why will remind you of why you're about to put in this extra effort that you definitely would rather sit in the couch and watch TV. Yeah. But your reason why will at least increase your percentage chances not to do that when you know you shouldn't do that. So your reason why would be number, your reason why, but making it visible is number three. And then I would just say, um, number four is understand time versus time versus money. I mean, you know, everything's trial and error. If you want to learn something, just spend time, look at videos, yeah. look at experts in the field. Uh, you know, there are people in this field who are very good that are very well known. Look them up. Who are the top fitness guys? Okay. What, look at their videos, look at whatever it is, or skip the line and get a coach and, you know, pay yeah. the money for it, which is what you have two options. And it's, um, that's number four. And then number five would be um, changing understanding your goal is not a straight line. So yeah. preparing for the mountain on the hike in heels is important. Yeah. All right. Don't wear heels to go walk up a mountain. Okay. Right. Wear regular shoes. Okay. But identify what that mountain is so that you are prepared for it ahead of time. So I think those are five things I would just quick take away. Um, I know we talked about consistency, progression, patience, all those things as well. So. Yeah, I think that I think those are great takeaways. And you also have certain services that you offer. Can you tell us a little about the different things that you offer people? Yeah. Uh, so number one, I offer everyone. Uh, so everyone who's listening, if you want to type in kind of, you know, I go to my website, scottspeaksfitness.com. Um, there's also a podcast, The Power of Progress, Mindset, Emotional Momentum on Apple, on Spotify, on YouTube. Actually, I started doing that on YouTube. Uh, so if you want to go there, love when people listen. It's my favorite thing. When I see more people download it, it's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, but other than that, I do offer a free power call, 30 minutes, tactical, strategic session of where you're at, what are your goals, what's going on, and, and maybe giving you three different things that you can start implementing today, totally free. Uh, if you tell me where you're from, from the show, um, you know, I'll, I'll, at least I'll know it came from here and then I'll, I'll, we'll go from there. And obviously if you came from the show, I, I have never done this before. I just thought about it live on air, but I am starting a new, uh, coaching program. It's an express four week coaching program. And if you say you came from the show, you'll be given an automatic scholarship for it. Some sort of discount. I haven't said an exact discount, probably like 25, 50% off or something like that. Something big if you come from the show, but, uh, I do a four week, uh, I'm going to be starting a four week express program that. If it's something for you, uh, and you do get the power call anyway, that's free anyway. That's uh, that's not included. That's that's separate. Um, 
But if it's something that you might be interested in, like we go over all the stuff we talked about today and we just hammer out you specifically. So those are so scottspeaksfitness.com. Everything's on the website. You scroll down, there's a little contact thing on there. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at scottfriedman24. Um, and I do a bunch of shorts and little video content on there. But yeah, that's about it. So pretty casual. What you see is what you get. Uh, love to have a power call. Love talking. There's no obligation to buy anything. Just get on the power call and let's talk about it. Let's see where you're at and how we can get you from point A to point B faster. I love it. I love it. Scott, this has been amazing. You gave us a world win of information. I'm oh. so glad you came on the show. I hope maybe one day you can come back on the show. This has been an amazing um, uh, podcast interview. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, we'll put all this information in our description so you could contact Scott and you'll have all his information where he's available to you. And I'm sure if you go on his website, there'll be an area where you can contact him and you could speak to him and ask him any questions that you may have. So Scott, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. This has been great. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I hope we gave value to everyone listening. Oh, you definitely did. You definitely gave me a plenty of value. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm going to be applying some of this stuff to my own life. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. You have a great day, Scott. You too.